Welcome to the show, everybody. Our guest, Charlene Clossy, is an award-winning intuitive composer, a multi-instrumentalist, and cosmic polymath. And specifically, Charlene is a certified mantra shikitsta therapist, primordial sound meditation instructor, RYT 207 spiritual laws of yoga instructor. We'll get into that later in the podcast. Uh, Soul detective and angel therapist, well-versed in energy medicine. And it doesn't end there. She literally has been studying piano and reading music scores since the age of two. And as a musician, Charlene scores music tuned to specific Hertz frequencies, and her music is part of UK research, which is led by by the preeminent acoustic physics researcher John Stuart Reed. And it's measuring its sonic effects on the regeneration of white blood cells and disease intervention. And lastly, before diving into vibrational healing arts, Charlene performed on Broadway, starred in major motion pictures, released charting singles, sung opera in Rome, Celtic fiddled with world champion Irish dancers, composed award-winning film scores, and even dual fiddled with Charlie Daniels for stadium crowds twice. And her music was even blessed by Pope Francis at the Vatican. So, Charlene, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> that was that was uh, that was quite tremendous. It's funny because you know when we're living life, I, I probably like most of us, we we tend to not think about the things that have come before. We're just constantly moving forward, right? So it it was interesting just to take a hot moment to hear a few of the highlights of um this journey, this encapsulation of what it is to walk as Charlene. So that was kind of cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. That was a, that was a happiness to my heart today. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's weird. I could also feel as I talked, I got like more pulled into your story and I started speaking faster and more passionately. Like, I was like, wow, this is wild. But yo, it, it, it is weird having someone else, because like, this has happened to me before. Where like, to me, I'm just like, I'm just Anton. Like Anton Zakor, I've known myself for 27 years. I've been my best friend for 27 years. You don't like, you don't see yourself from other people's perspectives. And then I've literally had like community members of my audience, like will write up things I've said. That's the weirdest thing when they, they literally quote you and then like, they, and then they put it together really nicely. And then they show it back to you like a whole paragraph of your quotes. And you're just like, whoa, who's that guy? That guy's smart. And then you realize it's yourself and you're just like, <laughs> I, I don't think I sounded that good. I think you just made it way better. So I can definitely attest oh, to like, it is weird. Yeah. And there's always two. I think there's beauty in the humility of it never being about you. It's about, it's about the work. It's about the journey. It's about sharing and connecting. And so that's such a beautiful testament too to uh, your awesome community of being so supportive to you as you help them connect with different information, perspectives, views on life, all of the above. So that's really cool. Hey, thank you. Yeah, my honestly, my, my community is the best. I love them. They're, they're just great people, <laughs> man. Um, but now, so this is what we're going to be jumping off with today. So literally feel free to go into this for like 10 minutes, 15, like whatever your heart, your soul feels like called in. But literally, please tell us the story of how you became who you are today, like your whole life. Because like I said, you've literally been like playing piano and reading sheet music since the age of two so some people it starts like the age of 20 and they take me from like 20 to 30 but you like you literally have to take us from like two years old to now so get into it this is gonna be fun <laughs> wow i love it we're starting with my least favorite subject <laughs> it's so funny i uh um and my doorbell's ringing see this is the universe is calling and saying, all right, you need to st step up and, and, and talk about it. Okay. So it's interesting because um, I think music has always been, it's not even been something I've always done. It's just who I am. When, when my mother was pregnant with me, her doctor said, all right, type A personality, you need to chill, figure out some way to sit down. <laughs> so she's like, all right, I'm gonna learn the piano. And so she took up piano lessons again, and she spent nine months sitting in front of the piano. And so my parents said whenever I was born, I literally would 
crawl. I when I could start crawling, I crawled myself to the piano, pulled oh. myself up, and started tapping. And I, I don't remember a time that music hasn't been a part of my life. I mean, I, I started piano lessons when I was two. I read music before I read words. Um, oh. Funny side note: my first word was cat. So you know, besides the obligatory mom, ma, da, da, you know, but then cat. So um, I, I think there's a lot of themes that have progressed throughout my life. And so maybe it's, maybe it might be more interesting to actually speak to themes in mm. life as I'm, I'm just kind of feeling my way through this. Cause like I said, it's not something I ever really talk about, <laughs> but um, you know, I think, I think all of life is a series of patterns, everything. You look outside in nature and you see when you stop and allow yourself a moment to connect with something greater than yourself, you begin to see the most magnificent tree begin to actually break down into these little tiny repeated patterns. And it's these patterns that are the building blocks of life. And I think in as a human being in this incarnation, to me, I understand these patterns as a combination of vibration you call music, right? All music is vibration. Vibration and story. So it's how we, the story is how we begin to understand these patterns that unfold around us. So for me, my, my early life, I think established most of the patterns that as probably for all of us began to repeat and um, kind of snowball, almost like a, a, just having this large, growing effect. Um, I, I'm an only child, so oh. I've always had a keen imagination and a desire to be left alone and to kind of get lost, have permission to get lost in my own mind because I was never having to deal or interact or um, convene in any way with siblings or, or other family members. It was a very tight-knit family. It was just my mom and my dad and I. And so I think that pattern of exploration of creative sovereignty really kind of took off at a very early age. And so because I was already seeing the world in patterns and through sound, patterns and sound exploded for me into story. And I remember even as a child, I think I was a baby when I was literally put in someone's arms and walked into, you know, walked onto a stage in front of 10,000 people or whatever, eight times a week or, and, and, you know, having that kind of intensity of energy coming into your system, because I think something that most people don't realize is that whenever you are in front of people, um, there is a lot of energy that, that you're connecting with and whether you're cognizant of it or not, and it doesn't change the fact that it's there. And so I think very early on, my, my physiology was beginning to condition to being able to experience and understand a variety of energies, which later on in my work has become what, what I do. So <laughs> very long introduction to say I was born at a very early age and I came out and uh, loved music, loved to tell stories, and the rest is history. But I think really what it kind of boils down to is just, it's, it's, it's what is it that drives me? And maybe, um, maybe that's true for all of us, right? What is it that actually drives us? Because those things that drive us are what propel us to make choices. And choice is the only difference between one result and another. It's just a different choice. Is there one choice that's better than another? I don't think so. I don't even think there's always one right choice because just because we think something's right. I don't know how many right choices you've made that have kind of turned out a little cattywankas, but a little bit farther down the road, you look back and you're like, you know, that right choice that turned out to be not so right. I learned a lot from, and it's that, that, that growth that we're able to have that experience that makes everything kind of the right choice just a function of how do we want to choose in every moment. Some choices make life easier. Some choices make life a lot harder, but it's up to us. That's where the sovereignty is. So, you know, when I was growing up, I've always been very, 
um, very driven, very, very type A, uh, a perfectionist, not in a debilitating sense, because I'm also an amazing procrastinator, uh, but a perfectionist in that of always expecting the highest from myself. Mm. If I could, if I could, if I could do something a little bit better, I needed to do it. And I think maybe that's why I'll probably, I'll probably, you'll probably hear the word choice a lot today because it's, <laughs> it's for, for me, it's one of my themes in life. It's, it's, um, what am I choosing? What am I stepping up and doing? Because I have that constant self-reflection of literally I'm staring back at myself saying, how do you feel about that? Was that good, bad, how, you good? Okay, let's move on, next one. <laughs> and it's this constant introspection. Um, and not from a place of, oh, well, you're a bad person. It's, it's never judgmental, but it's always a very intensely focused, um, a very intensely uh, focused reflecting force. It's very, mm. I, I'm, I'm a Capricorn, right? Capricorn's ruled by Saturn. Saturn is mm. a very much show up. He's a taskmaster. He's like, all right, let's understand the history. Let's create your foundation and then understand what works for you and what doesn't. But you have to step up and do the work. You have to do the work. So that's, I think that's kind of how I roll. I feel like I have to do the work. And uh, I mean, like whenever I went to <laughs> my first day of the sixth grade, I carried a briefcase and I wore a double-breasted baby <laughs> blue blazer with gold buttons. And uh. yeah, I took I take life very I took life very seriously. Um, so I I started very intensely living all of life. The wow. seventh grade I got a little bit uh, more laid back. I, I took a soft side briefcase and I wore a silk <laughs> blazer that was a little bit of a looser fit. So, you know I've I've. Uh, the, to paint that picture, I've not been one who moves in a pack. I'm very much mm. uh, the, uh, I'm a bit more of a loner and I like that. There's an opportunity to experience life in a different way. There's more silence. Mm. So I enjoy silence. I like it a lot, actually. Um, and I think it's because in those places of silence is when you can hear the most. And I like being able to hear because as a musician, every note that we make, every sound that we create in theory has purpose. And to get really clear of what's important to say of sound to make, you have to really get clear on what the silence is and is it worth breaking it because in the silence is the pure potential so there's been a lot of times in my life where i just really will tend to move more from a place of silence or being uh, singular not from a place of not liking other people or none of that it, it, it's literally just um I think I just really relish the, the stillness. So even as a, a child growing up, I was never really engaged with a, a community of sorts. I think when you, you know, you step, step into an or, or like for instance, an orchestral setting, you're in a community and you have to understand how to move in that community. And so interestingly enough, I think a lot of my relationship understanding in life came through sitting in an orchestra and understanding the relationship that the music that I was about to play interacted with all these other 80 people, 79 people sitting around me. And what was my job in that, that moment to contribute to something that was much greater than I? And how can I support someone else as it's their time to shine or to come forward? How do I step forward and bring a specific sound or song or message or melody line or whatever to the forefront in that moment because that's what the story was asking for so i think a lot of um a lot of life for me has always been much more um feeling and thought based and i kind of like that i uh 
I also find it fascinating, though, to see how people, there's other folks who just so relish connecting with, with groups and people and communities and big families and and, and they come alive when they do that. And that, because it's never been my inclination. So I'm always fascinated to see that, that there's so many ways to do this life and there's not a single one that's wrong or single one that's better. It's just what's yours. So I think every, every, movement I make, hopefully every sound that I make, comes from a place of thoughtful consideration of what is this actually contributing? You know, I don't know if, if, if you realize this, but on a quantum level, um, you know, quantum physics, they, we, we talk a lot about how vibration works. And once a vibration is created, once a word is spoken, once a thought is formed, it exists in perpetuity. Hmm. So every word that we speak, you literally can never take it back. Wow. And when you think about that, it kind of begins to shift your desire of what is it that I really should be saying? What is it that's really necessary? You know, I love that. I love the threefold test. Is it true? Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? Isn't and then that if it passes all three of those, then we can. Uh, there is a couple different people who have kind of manip uh, um, <laughs> who have reformed that idea um, to suit whatever it is that they're communicating with their community in that time. And I believe she is one of them. Yeah, but it actually comes from an ancient Arabic oh. uh, um, idea of of the idea too. And, and Christ talks about it. Um, he talks about the idea of passing, of being able to pass through the eye of the needle, that there's such a very fine line of what it is that contributes to the continual and perpetuating vibration of the universe of all that is. And showing up and walking through that, that, that fine line, walking through that eye of the needle every day, it, it, it's, it requires a, an expanded heart. And I think in a um, heightened sense of awareness in many ways. And so <laughs> it's something I'm still working on every day. Um, <laughs> but that really is kind of all of my life been what drives me. So any, anything that I've ever done, which honestly half the stuff I don't even really, I don't want to say I don't remember, but me I too. probably don't remember. And yeah. it's not a function of it wasn't amazing. It wasn't, you know, a, a, a beautiful experience, but um I, there's so much more in life. I, there's so much more to do. So let's do it, man. Let's go. <laughs> but I think understanding how we get to where we are helps us continue to understand, is this good? Is this going to work? Or, how, you know, how can I, how can I expand? How can I get a little bit better? So it makes life a little bit easier in some ways, you know, because mm -hmm. there are some days that the path is, and it's hard. Yeah. It's, it's hard when, when, circumstances happen. It's hard when life deals you circumstances that you don't want to deal with right then. It's hard when illness comes in from out of nowhere. It's hard when you see somebody that you love suffering. It's hard whenever you know this is the right path for you and the universe is like, no, shutting that door. <laughs> Try again. Mm. You, you know, and you're like, no, but that was, I put all of this, in you know, intention and my focus here and that's what it was. And it, but all of those times too is what colors life. I've always, Jeremy and my husband and I, we, we, we always go back to this idea that um, in fine art, that the story of the painting is told just as much through the shadow as it is through the color, the light that we can see. And you need mm. both because it gives life dimension. It gives dimension to the story. And, what is a story without dimensionality? Every story has a hero. It has a villain because that's how we understand story in this time space. We understand the world through dualism. So you can't be everybody's hero all the time. Hopefully you're not everybody's villain, though you'll always be <laughs> somebody's villain at some point because they need that. And that's okay. As long as you can, remember my mom growing up, she'd always tell me, as long as you can put your head on your pillow every night, fall asleep, and you be okay, and you good with whatever your defining connection point is, your source, <laughs> whether it's God, whether it's self, whatever you want to call it, whether it's nothing, 
um, then you're doing okay. As long as you can do that, then if you can't, if you, if, if you have problems sleeping, let's reevaluate whatever you're is running through your mind at that time. So good pearl of wisdom from a mother <laughs> <laughs> who got me to where I am today all because of her. So it's amazing. You never know what actions that you take will begin to expand and snowball into an effect of something that always becomes so much greater than you. Mm. Oh man. <laughs> that was a, wow. That was, uh, that was, that was incredible. Um, I, 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 I felt, a, a kinship with a lot of that. Um, <laughs> like at, at one point you're talking and I, I was just thinking, I was like, yeah, I relate to all of this, but you've achieved way more than I have in the same time frame. I was like, I was like, I feel like you and I are, are so similar. And it was, it's a joke. Like, I, I know I'm going to do amazing things in the world, like hundred percent. Like I know I'm, I'm just at the beginning of my journey. But like so well, many of the things, go on, go on. No, I was going to say, but remember too, that timing is so unique to every person. And I'm actually probably a lot older than, <laughs> than you think I am. <laughs> but it's, you know, so timing too is, again, when we come back to duality, when we come back uh, to this understanding in this three-dimensional world, the only thing that separates us from uh, a greater understanding of that which we cannot see is time and space. It defines our parameters here. But everyone has to experience time and space as only they can. So for me, as a Capricorn, Capricorn, since you know, we're just throwing this out here, but Capricorns are very much known for we're always climbing that mountain. Yeah. But most of the time, we don't arrive to our peak until much later in life. You know, and I find for me that that's kind of always been the case. Like, really? I've always done everything in life late. I've never done this stereotypical like you know whatever time frame whatever activity is that people expect things to be done that that's never been how i've operated always very very late but whenever i start doing something i usually do it really 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 well yeah. so but that's not a function of anything other than just kind of my construct so you know i think there's an element too of grace that we all have to have for ourselves you know, we talk about grace a lot, giving grace to somebody else, but we don't really talk about giving grace to ourselves. And when we do, a lot of times this idea of, of giving compassionate understanding to, to myself kind of gets tossed into this category of like, well, um, you're either slacking off or you're actually not stepping up. You're, mm. you're, you're, you're making excuses as opposed to saying, okay, let, let's really actually do a gentle, kind, th and thorough self-reality check. And you never throw yourself under the bus, but when you're there, you figure out how you got there, so you never have to backpedal and just extract yourself to come back to a centralized point where you can be happy in that moment of like, yeah, maybe not the best choice I could have made. I could have done this, and it could have yielded a different result, but also knowing you could have done something very nice, and the result not be any different. So, mm. you know, I think whenever we can actually break down this element of grace and just allow, there's so much more flow. There's so much more freedom that will come because of that. So all of that to say is that <laughs> um, everything in its perfect timing, and it's not about what we accomplish because we're never going to get it all done. Ever. Ever. Never. Yeah. <laughs> I thank God yeah. for that because the life would be really boring. I mean, think about it. If you woke up and you're like, I got nothing to do today. Some days, you know, there's like, there's like a, a certain amount of time that that feeling actually is kind of nice to wake up with. Yeah. And then you're like, um, okay, now I'm bored. And then you displace any of your passion and zeal for life. So. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent, and 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 yeah, my, my comment was more of a joke. It was it was more like kind of just a joke <laughs> that I said to myself in my head, because like you know, because as you said, when you were talking about you being a Capricorn, that's interesting. Because like, 
you know, everything you've said, like, like I said, you have a lot of accomplishments, like you've, you've done a lot of things. And then like when I was thinking about like, you know, the age of two, you, you like learning how to play piano and you learning how to read film scores. It's like, yeah, you, you know, you started very early. And, and one thing I was also reflecting on as you were, as you were talking and, and you're sharing is that like, I feel like in some sense, you know, the, the analogy I'll use is like a, is a usual play three acts or four acts? Three acts? I, it depends. It's usually three, but it kind of depends on what the story is. But usually three's. Good. Yeah. So 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 let's say like you know everybody's story or, is. Jeremy, three you want to correct me? Jeremy's over here. So my husband, who is a award-winning screenwriter, he's, he's always <laughs> going. Well, kind of did you know? Like act one, two A, two B, three. <laughs> okay, two so a, he said to be three. completely technically correct. Yeah, it's act one, two A, two B, and three. So we can call it three or four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 so like, but that screenwriting, I'm talking about stage. Stage is actually usually two acts, but sometimes if it's dramatic, it's usually just like two A and or one A, one two A and two B. So it's kind of three. It just kind of depends. So it doesn't matter. Your analogy is fantastic. Keep going. I'm sorry, I digress. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So it's like you know, like let, let's just let's just say four acts. Let's just say for the for the sake of the the thing, it's like, or or, or three acts. Like you have almost like the beginning the middle in the end i'm actually like shit like shaping it's like the beginning is like the building up of who you end up being and this is more like the hero's journey or the hair the heroine's journey um it would be like the first act is like you you know that's you figuring out who you are going through a lot of uh trials tribulations and you you getting to a point and then in some sense you can say like the middle act is like you have like your first mountain your first big challenge where like that first big challenge you define and you really find out who you are and your purpose. And then it's like, then you could even say there's almost like a fall. So like, let's use like a four act structure. So it's like, you're building up who you are. You have the first challenge, you succeed. After you succeed, you're broken down again. There's something happens that has you kind of <clears throat> reevaluate because there's almost like a, a moment of almost reflection needed after your first victory of like, because if you almost take the momentum too high, that's like, that's like Icarus, you know, going to the sun and his wings burning. You almost need, after you, uh, you climb to the top of the mountain, it's like, you need to, t you need to reevaluate, reflect. And then you, the second mountain is like, that's like the climax of the movie. That's like you firmly stepping into who you are. That's like Batman begins. Like, you know, you know, the th three quarters through the movie, he's like, he finally establishes this is who I am. This is what I'm meant to do. And then there's the big ending fight. You call that like act three or something. And that's like, that's the climax. That is the peak in some sense from my standpoint. Obviously, Jeremy probably has a different perspective on this. That's more accurate than mine. But like for mine, it's like, you know, that's like the big crescendo of the movie, the big, the, the Lord of the Rings, Minas Tirith, the big war scene, right? And then after Minas Tirith, it's like you have the, the, the come down again. And that's when the Hobbit this could be all Lord of the Rings, the hobbits come back to the Shire and it's full circles. Joseph Campbell, you come back home. But it's like, you come back home, you come back to where you started, but you're different because you just, you, the, the, like, you just had the, the big glory. Like, you just had, you just proved yourself to yourself and nobody else. Like, you succeeded at the whole point of your incarnation. Like, you know, you've done that and then you come back and, you know, in some sense you can say you grow old, you start a family, and there's this beautiful moment of there's less maybe of a, you know, in some sense, there's that masculine, that testosterone pull that's always pulling young men to almost in some sense put themselves in the eye of battle. And like, you know, it's almost foolish in some sense. And the, the, the victory and the fight is in some sense more important than the family or the the relaxation and the the just you know, the accepting life at his terms. Like the young man is so, he wants to prove himself. And the universe is like, hey, slow down. Everything is going to happen the way it is. And this, the young boy is like, no, I, I'm the hero. I need to take control of my destiny. And there's this interesting thing. And so my whole point in saying all of this is like, when I joked that my, you know, me, I'm 27. You, when you were 27, I feel 
looking at your thing i'm like i probably have like if someone wrote the the story of my life right now i'd have like two things like yeah you you achieve sixty thousand subscribers on youtube like that's kind of that's kind of it and you at this point you probably had a lot of things and i love that both ways i'm like i love that you're you know you can call it your act one you know yours was potentially if we if we all get a two-hour movie maybe your act one was a bit shorter than mine my act one is a bit longer. And you know, my act one was 27 years, you can call it. Maybe your act one was 20 years, 25, whatever it was. We all have our certain, you know, act one, act two, act three, act four. And I'm like, okay, it took me quite a while to get through act one. You know what I mean? I really kind of worked through act one for a while. And now I'm like, I can feel in my bones as we talked about, you know, me, you know, potentially moving to Mexico or moving to a new country and, you know, going on this adventure and this journey and really allowing the synchronicities of life to take me on a journey. I'm like, I'm about to embark on act two and I'm excited and I know act two is going to rock and it's going to be difficult. It's going to be tough, but it's going to be exciting. And I know I'm going to succeed at it. And it's probably going to knock me back down after my Saturn returns or whatever. And I'll, you know, it'll be beautiful. But like, yeah, I just, I, I, I view in some sense, like all of our acts and our stories and we all have different genres. Some people have a tragedy. Some people have a comedy. Some people have the epic war story. Other people have the fantasy, the Harry Potter. It's like, I feel like in some sense, we all have, you know, our story that we, that we incarnate to tell. And it's like sometimes when we're going through our story, we get so lost in our role and we get so focused on my consciousness has been behind my eyes for 27 years and nobody else's. The only time I have the ability to project my consciousness, there's many times, but for the sake of the argument, the only time that I have really the opportunity to project my consciousness and observe life for different eyes is Jeremy. I, you know, movies, literature. It's like, the, I think a lot of the time, the the beauty the grace and the in the brilliance of of entertainment is lost on us i think in some sense because you know we have just tons of marvel movies and we're just telling the same stories over and over and over again we become like almost um in some sense you know back i feel like you know in the 70s 80s 2000s we had goodwill hunting we had dead poet society we had star wars we had batman we had like we had all of these genres and they were all really successful in some sense and then now you know because of hollywood shifting in some sense in some sense this is just my projection of it is that like because the blockbusters are pushed so much and that's what gets the you know, all of the branding and the marketing gets pushed so much. In some sense, it's like, I feel like the marketing, whatever is marketed to the masses, what is, whatever is marketed to us is like our society, in some sense, the universe telling, this is what's important right now. This is what's in the zeitgeist. This is what's exciting. This is what all of our consciousnesses are being plugged into right now. And it's like, it's interesting that when I look at like this time versus 20 years ago, again, I wasn't really alive in a big way 30 years ago. So I don't have a complete understanding of this, but when I'm just looking at the arcs of stories, and if you look at time as just one big story and every generation is a story, the nineties is a story, the eighties, the 2000s, the 2010s, the 2020s, like every decade is the story. And again, I review music for a living. When I'm not podcasting, I do music reviews and stuff. And I love to dive into eras and try to psychologically understand the common thread behind all of these eras. Like, what is this saying? All of this music, Savage Garden, you know, Roxette, Tori Amos, like, you know, all these artists, what is the common, what is the pattern, as you talked about, what is the pattern telling us about the universe and the consciousness in the 90s and the 80s disco or like whatever it was like i just find it fascinating listening to you and then reflecting on my own life like and i love how you talk a lot about your life and existence through the realm of story because in some sense story is like for me why story is so important is story has so much of the element of time and space like if we if we're thinking about like living 4D or living 3D, like we got you know time and space, and that's like built into story because story is is about is is reframing the changes of time 
It's about reframing, like just how we all have a biological clock. Like I'm watching the TV show Our Universe right now on Netflix. And it's amazing because it connects the cosmos to the mammals on Earth. And it shows how literally the cosmos shifting has a, has like sends this 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 thing through every species on the planet and then our instincts and our hormones and all of these things to shift in the body and how certain times of the year these things shift you know well i think too story is all about relationship and i think that's why it's fascinating because we begin to look at life through the lens of relationship and i don't necessarily just mean relationship with another person. I mean a relationship with even within factors in our own body, as you're talking about. I mean, when we think about the circadian rhythms, we think about what's the ebb and flow of what's happening happening in our body at any at any given time, the relationship between our major organ systems. Um, the relationship of what's going on inside and what's going on outside, which takes me back to what you were talking about before, kind of the ethos of how every every time period, every mini epoch, um, connects to a greater consciousness, which to me, yes, 100%, 100%, which to me, I think is why it's so fascinating that we're, we're kind of re-arriving, we're remembering that if we ever want to do anything that actually has an impact beyond our own singular one little me, me world, Charlene's house, Charlene's world, that if I'm going to do that, I don't actually go outside. I, the, the grand adventure is less about what is going on in the outside world. The grand adventure is actually what's happening on the inside world because the outer world will reflect our inner world. And what do you have control over? In here, you ain't got control over that until you master your inner world. And I think once we begin to do that, then all these miracles, synchronicities, etc. around us begin to unfold and manifest in ways that you're like, oh, look at these relationships unfolding, transpiring. Wow, look at how I perceive myself a little differently. Look how I've stepped into my own power. Look how I've stepped into, I've stepped into the warrior spirit that I am. I've stepped into the loving element of who I am, whatever archetype you're talking about. Mm. And But again, it all goes back to those at the very beginning that I was talking about is the patterns. So the story is just the relationship of these specific frequencies. And when we, we understand that all of life is nothing but an arrangement of frequencies and our interaction with those frequencies, it, it becomes a lot of fun. It becomes a lot of fun to play in that, that little sandbox. It's not a little sand, it's a massive, it's an infinite sandbox of possibility. But it does require us to come back, to turn in, to reawaken and remember how to get to that sandbox. And I think story is such a, uh, an easy way for us to connect to because it is something, it's, it's a representation, it's a reflection of all of those patterns that are around us that on an innate level, we intrinsically know, we don't have to describe. We can look at some, you know, there's not many different faces for a sad face across culture. They pretty much all look exactly the same. Facial structure doesn't really change. The structure does, but the, the how we begin to elicit what's going on on the inside, how we bring that forth to the outside, it's very much the same. So there are these, these patterns that when we reconnect to, it's, it's empowering. Mm. Yeah, I was even thinking about when you were talking about how the external is a reflection of the internal. It's like, that's technically exactly true. This, the, the story is unfolding on the inside because it's your inner passion that has you write a song in your head. And then you just, you externalize what you already have inside you. Every play you make, everything you write, every song you create, everything you sing starts off in you. And then you use your vocal cords or whatever, your muscles to externalize something that originates within you. And so well, every I think it's, single I, thing, go on. 
Yeah, no, I would say I'd even take it a step farther because I don't think it originates in me. I think it originates mm -hmm. in a space of infinite possibility. But because I've individu individuated myself, I've, I've connected myself to I am Charlene Clossy, then I've removed myself from all that is. So the job is to remember the totality because that's where all of this frequency and where I actually am as well and where we all are because it's all, but reconnecting to that, it's not even just inside, it's actually beyond the inside. Like you have to go within to go without. <laughs> yeah, it's, ch it's channeling. Like I, 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 I've had some channeling experiences myself. Like I've had some psychic experience and some channeling, I've channeled things before. And that's even a weird thing because you know, I got an epiphany one time that, like, I think a lot of the time we think like, oh, we're not channeling now, I'm Anton, and then I'm channeling something. And I think in some mm -hmm. sense, we're always channeling all the time, just sometimes it's more obvious. And sometimes that channel is a bit wider, and it can allow a bit more profound things in. But I feel like in some sense, like, you know, yeah, I think we're channeling stuff all the time. I think in some sense, we're like a hive mind of the universe. And the universe is always kind of little by little or like just sending signals you know why do you turn right instead of left because you kind of just do because it feels right and it's like yeah, it's hard I, to get in the logic of that yeah it's interesting i wonder if we're a hive mind as much as we are an an infinite mind in a hive mind there is a certain there are certain patterns which are always repeated but mm. what we're starting to see in the universe is, is that there, there's actually, there was an article that just came out and they were talking about the asymmetry in the universes that we're, they're beginning to see now, which asymmetry. is completely blowing every asymmetry within the universes, uh, mm. within galaxies, amongst galaxies, that is, it's kind of blowing everybody's mind, which would make sense because before we always approach things from a dualistic perspective, right? Good, bad, right. black, white, up, down, everything in balance. It's always going to come back in balance. It's always this, but it's not. There's a constant expansion. But if you think about, if we think about a, a snowball, for instance, we're still thinking of constant and a snowball that is beginning to constantly expand, which by the way, side note is such a total, totally funny analogy that a Floridian is trying to give to a Canadian. <laughs> so, if you, so, you know, if you have a snowball that and it's, you know, it's an originating state, it just continues to expand, but it's usually if it's, especially if it's moving, um, it's usually uh, expanding pretty consistently on all sides. Correct. Yeah, but that's still limited to time and space. So when we're seeing patterns that we thought were in time and space, acting outside of a balanced dualistic way, there that's some major stuff going on. And what that tells me on an in, on an intuitive level is is that there's a lot more to there's a lot more potential for us to connect with. You want to call it 4D, just taking it into a, you know, a 5D, whatever. It, <laughs> it really matters less about how we quanti quantify this conversation about expansion. And you always need that little bit of friction, which how do you get friction? Well, you don't necessarily get friction if, you know, a record player has, if, if, it's, if, if there's a circle that's moving around uh, another circular object, there's no friction. But if there's a circle that has some outward juts on it that's moving around another circular object, there's going to be some friction until it comes back into balance. So there, there, there's this constant pruning that is always happening to us. Um, I, and I just, I just find it really fascinating that, that a lot of times we really, we, 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 it's easy to give up sovereignty to say that, oh, we're just doing something that's a part of the patterns that are repeating ourselves, as opposed to saying, huh, what if I proactively choose a different pattern, then what? And that's really interesting. I don't know if we'll ever have those answers. I don't know if it really <laughs> matters. I don't know, it, it probably doesn't matter at all. But, but again, it's that idea of how do we expand in this place of, of of an awakened awareness. You know, it's one thing to kind of move through life and, well, I'm doing things that I'm being reactive. You know, it's another thing to really step up and say, no, I'm, I'm proactively choosing. I'm moving to Mexico. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> <laughs>
Look yeah. at the snow. Probably. Yeah. A, I mean, I think it's a good choice, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I'm with you. And you said something interesting. Um, what'd you say? You said, um, mm, I, f I forget what you said, but you said something re really interesting. It was going to send me in, in, in a different direction. Um, <laughs> but one of, one, one of what's funny is that you don't have any of these questions, but question one was you share your story, right? G guess what question two was that I was going to ask you? Did I already answer it? <laughs> it was that, what do you think our reality is? <laughs> Like oh, we're literally we're in, the, we're, we're in the middle of this conversation and then and then question three and and we can we can jump in this year question three was nikola tesla if you want to find the secrets of the universe think in terms of energy frequency and vibration and so i was going to jump into sound healing and its relationship to the matrix so from your perspective if we live in this quantum matrix as greg braden would say um yeah why is sound healing so important why is it such because a powerful every tool because everything is vibration. Sound is vibration. Everything literally is vibration. So, so, and I think it's very easy to forget. I think humans as a, as a, as a species, we have a very strong propensity to always look at the bright side. We're actually very loving. We're very um, ingenious. We're always looking for ways to, to, to function or move in different ways. I think it's probably what makes us really, really unique. And so if we're, if we're, if we're really going back, um, sorry, my mind just went on this complete total tangent. I got to bring hey, it back for a second. Here uh, we come, here we come. Yeah. Bring her back. So I, I think if we, if we actually bring back the reality of what we're talking about in this time space, if everything right here, right now is created by frequency and we're, exhi we're exhibiting that, we're living that, um, we have to remember that sound healing is just the other side of the same coin as sound destruction. Um, interesting side note, in astrology, most people don't realize this, but the planet Mars, you would think, you know, Mars, he's the god of war. He's like the planet of destruction. He's a badass, right? He gets out and he shakes things up and he's going to... Um, bring a lot of mayhem whilst he does it. But did you also know that Mars is also the god of healing? Oh, no. In astrology, Mars, the planet, very much brings healing back into the system, into the body, when you know how to connect with those frequencies. So I think sound healing, actually, there's a lot of that similarity to it as well. And we, we, we kind of couch this, the beautiful aspect of it, the beautiful side of it, of sound healing. Oh, it, it's helping me return to my center and my wholeness. Yes. The question is what got you off of there in the first place? So sound healing is really just a tool and no different than an astrological chart, for instance, understanding someone's makeups or the current mapped trajectory of the choices that one might be more inclined to make or not during a specific incarnation. I think we, we have to bring in that element of understanding the choices that we make to bring in the vibrations, whatever they are, good, bad, happy, sad, into our physical existence every day. And it's usually the, the, the vibrations that we're not cognizant of, we're really not giving much attention to that starts to pull us out create disharmony in our system. Otherwise, everything that we do, right? It's our nature to harmonize. It's our nature to, to be in the flow. It's whenever we start adapting to preconceived notions, things that we're told to do, educational systems, political structures, you fill in the, the rest there. There's so many things we could, we could name, right? But that, that we give our sovereignty to that that's actually what pulls us out of balance. And we're usually not even aware that we're doing it because we've been told, oh, this is what you should do. And because we're kind, good and, and accepting creatures, sometimes we take that and let that go a little too far. So disharmony, discordance in the system further amplifies. And I think so there's this really you know, sound healing, it's, it's such a beautiful buzz and, and catchphrase, but I think if we really break it down, it actually, maybe it should be 
more aptly refer to as sound responsibility. Because it's not just, oh, I'm going to play some crystal bowls and you're going to feel better. You will, and I can, but I have to do a whole heck of a lot more to actually help realign all of the discordance that's gotten you to where you are in this moment where you're like, wow, I have a headache or wow, I have an illness or wow, I just feel crappy or wow, I'm angry all the time, whatever it is, right? Those are, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of responsibility that I think we have to step in. We have the opportunity to choose. We don't have mm -hmm. to do anything. <laughs> we have the opportunity to choose to step into, to live in a, in a way that actually brings more harmony. So I do love sound healing. I think it's a very powerful modality, but I do think it's more powerful when appropriate, appropriately coupled with an inner understanding of our landscape of, oh, what, what brought the disharmony in the first place? Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's very cool. So, yeah. Cause I, uh, I've been, I've been utilizing sound healing on a daily basis since August. Um, and I, how, okay. Here's a question for you. Um, in mm -hmm. your, in your experiences, if someone uses sound healing on a daily basis for mm -hmm. one to two hours, how quickly do you think you'd start to see external shifts in their vibration or even, I guess, internal shifts in their vibration in a big way? And I, that's probably different for everybody, but what's your interpretation? It's 100% different for everyone. And it's a great question because I think that's a question everybody wants to know because we've been programmed to think, okay, what pill do I need to take to fix yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. So, so the truth of the matter is, is that you actually don't need anything at all to change your frequency at all. The only thing you need is a decision and an allowance to do so. There is nothing outside of you that you ever need to be who you fully are, who you fully can be. But in any moment, we're still discovering, remembering, choosing, whatever. So sound healing is just a tool in the toolbox of many. When I do, for instance, when I do some of the sound healing sessions that we do on Insight Timer or on YouTube, um, I'm just reading energy and I make a very conscious, I'm just, I'm reading energy of the entire group. And when you read the energy of say 300 people who are energetically sitting in front of you, you see a lot. And the question becomes is, is that you have to understand, well, what is it that actually needs to be given in this moment? What can be shown that can be received? And it's usually never my, it's never Charlene's understanding or knowledge or for lack of a better word, judgment of what it should be, but it's the flow. It's the, it's the oh. allowance through. And I, I hesitate to use the word channeling because channeling, I'm very careful with channeling because when you channel, a lot of times you give up your own information or you displace mm. your own information with information from someone or something else which sometimes can be very effective, but sometimes it can be very problematic because then you've dulled the senses that you have built up in your physical body that then you don't necessarily get the right feedback, especially biofeedback when we're, we're really dealing with um, the, the physical energy systems of, and a feeling into that. You actually, it, it, it gets a little sketchy, I have found. Mm. So I try to never actually <laughs> channel that. You know, if I'm creating a character of a person who has, who is no longer with us, a deceased person, and I'm telling their story, that's a very different conversation. <laughs> but I, um, or if I'm channeling a very specific energy, that's a different conversation too. So, you know, sometimes you want to be able to say, okay, I want to bring in the fullness of abundance, the fullness mm. of healing, the fullness of freedom, the fullness of permission, the full, and it can be anything, right? The fullness of peace. Yeah. And I just want to step into that vibration as much as I can. And I find that, um, 
in a lot of these sessions, in sound healing sessions, it's about allowing your own system to maintain a frequency in such a way that other people can choose and begin and then hold a matching quality of that vibration. And it doesn't have anything to do with that I'm necessarily feeling peaceful in that moment. Um, actually, sometimes some of the best sessions are whenever um, there's been a lot of turmoil and we Seriously? connect to something. Yeah, and we connect to something that's that's um, deeper. That's healing in that sense. Um, I also find it interesting. I'm, I'm I'm still playing with this idea. You know, we 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 kind of loosey goosey label this idea of healing. Kind of like we label the the idea of love, right? In yeah. in, in English, love is so. It's like I love ice cream. Yeah, I love yeah. seagulls. I love my cats. Yeah. I love my husband. I love my parents. Well, which one is it? <laughs> yes, yeah. it's all of the above, right? And I don't know. Maybe we do have it right. Maybe true love really is the totality of all. And I can love ice cream as much as I love my parents because I can be fully engaged with what ice cream, what this is just as much as I can with a person, right? It's the mm. engagement of life. So maybe we're actually not too far off of that. That's a total digression. But, you know, I think um, it's, it's these, these, this idea of connecting to healing that I'm still really, I'm, I'm gonna be really honest with. I'm, I don't say I'm wrestling with, but I'm, 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 I'm pondering, I'm watching, I'm witnessing, I'm experiencing, and I'm allowing the, the information to con continue to come and trying to be as open to that as I can, can be, because. So if you think about healing, if you say, I want to be healed, even if we say, I am healed, there's an acknowledgement that you aren't or that you weren't. And and is that in some way straddling the past and pulling us out of this present moment? Is there, a, is there a better way to claim an aspect of that frequency that while we are saying, you know what, I really need a healing in my physical body. Maybe what I'm really saying is, I really need, a re I really need to remember my wholeness. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I, so I, yeah, I say that because like this is a, something like a restoration, <clears throat> like a restoration. Yeah, well, rest, but again, restoration still there's a there's yeah, a there's a deficit. It, it there's it. still yeah. There's still a disconnection from wholeness. So I think there might be something into that, and 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 maybe even too in the nomenclature of sound healing, maybe that's even maybe not as well named as it could be. Maybe it's sound yeah. restoration. Yeah, well, it, it just makes me think or about the the power of language. Wholeness. Yeah, like yeah. the power the power of language, like lang lang like our words and our symbols are the only way we can articulate out loud our internal our internal uh, everything. It's just like you know the only mm -hmm. avenue to externalize the internal is through these words. And mm -hmm. we we've been conditioned by people outside of ourselves of what those words mean, and so we're mm -hmm. in some sense like the best you can do is you're trying to paint the picture in your head with words that can never actually articulate what's in in the head, what what, what what's in your field, what's in whatever it is this this process, um, and I and also which I think what, is why silence is golden, or, or even telepathy. Like what if yeah. we could if we could tap into telepathy, I can actually download my picture. Well, that's why art's so beautiful. Because art yeah. bypasses the 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 meaning and the conditioning of meaning. It's like mm -hmm. I can show you a picture of pure love and it can have the vibra like I, you can make a song of pure vibration of love. But like maybe, who knows? Like um there's a there's a woman, Laurel Erickson, I think she's been on Paul Check and, and Aubrey Marcus, but she's a genius when it comes to words. And she said, like, mm -hmm. the word morning means, like, to mourn. So when you say good morning, mm -hmm. you're, you're vibrationally bringing someone down in some sense um, as you are simply trying to say good day or beautiful existence. Like, that mm -hmm. is in this time frame. 
And it just, mm-hmm. yeah, it makes me think. And then like when you, and this is back to channel and flow. Uh, when you were speaking about that, I found that fascinating um, because in some sense, from what I gathered from you, to channel is to take an information and bypass the ego structure that is Anton or Charlene. And then to be in the flow is to, cha- is to channel information through the ego structure. So essentially, like we have this like semi-permeable membrane and it's like channeling bypasses the membrane and it's like a, a Dropbox file that just goes right in. But it's like, yeah, to, f- to be in the flow is much more of a connection between Charlene or Anton and higher source, you know? It's interesting, too, because I think channeling, there's, I mean, again, there's so many different activities that fall under this, uh, you know, this particular word, this idea of, of specifically of channeling. But, you know, some people, too, they very much see it as... Um, an ego identity outside of their own individualized structure that is sending information into their physical body for them to manifest it in the physical plane, the the, the densest plane, because they don't have a body, for instance. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, nuance of, of even under, of, of what we call what it is that we do or don't do or think about doing or have no idea how to do, you know? So I think there's, um, I think awareness is everything. Awareness is all. When we can, we can really understand, not from a place of intellect, but from a place of innate intelligence, there's a, there is a, a deeper ability that you, there, things that need to work, work, and things that don't need to work, don't. And, and you don't have to decipher what is or what isn't. And, and you're able to move more into that creative structure, which is freedom. And, and things flow in a different way. So... Yeah, words are very, very powerful. I'm glad you brought that up too about the various words that have different, that they connect to different meanings, even within our own singular langu- language, and how that affects us. It's it's interesting because, um, you know, they say that the language of God is basically if we were to articulate it in ways that our voice structure and our physiology would allow, it's basically the articulation of vowels. Oh. Um, Usually it's why why it's very different than we we add consonants percussive breaking of with consonants that break the divine sound. And when you go into that and get lost in the divine sound, then it takes you into these places as you were as you were referring to, like with telepathy, for instance, and ultimately back to the silence. So I don't know, I just think it's really fun to be human. To, 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 <laughs> I don't think there's a, a good way or a bad way to experience it. I think I think the more we experience, the more information we send back. <laughs> that if 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 life really is just in the mind of God dreaming dreaming itself into an infinite number of ways, an infinite number of possibilities of you, of me, of every person watching right now, the experiences that you've had, even as seemingly small as your interaction with the Starbucks barista, you, you, we can take back this information and suddenly there is an expansion of light. And you know, science continues to, to redirect us back into the ways of like, guys, you know what? You can prove everything you need to with science. We're getting there. <laughs> you're taking a while because you're a little, but you're, you're not letting your intelligence shine. You're letting, you're getting stuck in your intellect, but we'll catch your intellect up. But in the meantime, just go back to your heart. It's all there. It's really not that hard. <laughs> mm. I think that, you know, I think sometimes the biggest things in life are, are, the simplest, the most profound revelations are the most simplistic concepts that children understand. Hmm. Uh Oh, last two questions before we finish up here. Um, Okay. The first is, are you aware of any language on earth or in the history of earth that only uses vowels? Um, And secondly, I'd like to go into your gong shower planetary album and talk about what every song is intending to do. But let's start off with the vowels and language. Yeah, so there are several languages that still exist. I think there's one, um, Greg Braden actually talks about this. There's one uh, language 
the name will come to me in a moment, um, but that uses minimal consonants. But if we think about, if we think about whether they're stories, metaphors, whatever, from any of the sacred scriptures and texts that we have here now that we understand that we connect with. So the story uh, in the Old Testament, for instance, of um, the Tower of Babel, mm. the idea that really what differentiated people who were speaking, who were communicating on very deep levels, on very spiritual levels, um, was the introduction of the consonant and then the um, the, the propelling and spreading of those consonants throughout the rest of the world, which is then created the, the various languages that we know throughout, initially into the energy languages. So like into Sanskrit, Aramaic, even ancient, uh, Hebrew, to some extent Greek was con is considered a more of an energy language. And when I say energy language, I mean languages that, unlike English, which is very word-based descriptive language, it's, it's a descriptive language, right? We say that the tree is green with brown bark. Everything about that, we're describing the tree. Well, for instance, a, uh, an energy language would be more inclined to say something like, I experience a growing organism in front of me that provides shelter and warmth and comfort and shade from the sun. And you begin to f have this feeling that's experienced with it. So even, I mean, even if we, if you start to bring up the idea of, of trans, translating and thusly then transliterating uh, words of ancient teachers, so much of that actually gets lost in translation and of needing to go back to the source. There is um, a really beautiful quote. It's, it's, a, it's an, uh, an Arabic proverb. And it talks about how you never want to learn from the sages. You actually will always want to go to their sources. What is their source? That's where the information is. So, so often I think we're trained to just go back to the teacher, go back to your pastor, go back to the minister, go back to the rabbi, go wow. back to the whatever. But when you do that, well, <laughs> there's all this information over here. And that's still dumbing down from the divine, yeah. right? Yeah. So this idea of always going back to the source, I think, is so key. So I think one of the simplest things that a person can do on their daily, in their daily life of realigning their own energy structure in a way that uh, we could call it sound healing, we could call it sound reintegration, we could call it sound wholeness, we could call it sound responsibility, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but of articulating these divine vowels, because in our physical body, when we repeat vowels, uh, when we repeat certain sounds, we actually begin to elicit responses, physiological responses at different parts of our body. And for instance, there are, um, if I wanted to, if I wanted to um, pr send energy towards my left elbow, I would s speak a very specific sound than if I wanted to send the energy towards my right elbow, still an elbow, but they vibrate mm. in two different ways. And that would make sense. I mean, if, if, if you've studied Ayurveda, if you studied any of the um, ancient um, medical understandings of the world, we have a, f a feminine flow side and a masculine flow side. So of course, you're going to speak to them a little differently. I speak to dudes very differently than I speak to ladies. It's just a function of how our physio physiology hears things. It has nothing to do with gender, sex, inability, none of that. That's all crap that we make up, right? It's a function of how the energy responds in the space. And you don't necessarily have to be a a male to be a dude. <laughs> you don't have to be a female to be a lady as well, right? We're just a combination of these different energies in different ways. It's the recognition, the acknowledgement, and the permission to allow these energies to flow as they will in my space, in your space, in anybody's space. So it's going back to the exercise of what we can all do, articulating these vowels, because you'll begin to notice that your body will, oh, it'll begin to kind of calm down. Scientifically, what we're doing is we're actually lowering our blood pressure, we're lowering our respiratory rate, we're lowering our, um, our all of the fight and, uh, ref, fight and, fight fight or and flight, flight response yeah. mechanisms. We're, we're, we're diminishing um, those, indoor, um, those chemical reactions in the body and we're bringing about uh, responses that are actually increasing all the good stuff that we really need in our system. And it's just a function of saying, why, right? 
And if you articulate it, if you, if you really let it resonate in your system, and I don't mean just once or twice, though if you only have once or twice to do it, some is better than none, but just sit in the sound and recognize that this sound is actually the sound of something much greater than you. When we do that, we match the greatness that is beyond us. That's where the rebalancing is. Hmm. Very, very cool. <laughs> and, and, and now lastly, we only have a, a f about five minutes. Um, sure. But yeah, your, your, uh, your album, um, where every song yeah. is like sun, mercury, all take us through like, what's the intention behind that album and how does it work? Yeah. So aligned, a planetary mantra and gong shower is an album that is tuned to the specific frequencies of each planet that corresponds to the different names of the tracks, as you just said. So every physical matter in the universe has its own vibrational signature. Even within your own physical body, your heart cell vibrates at a different pace than that of your kidney or your large intestine. Um, this is how when stem cells bring forth new cells to regenerate, they and they're directed to a specific uh, energy system within the body, they know what to do. They, they actually redefine their frequency towards that group that they're joining. So if we know that we're a microcosm of a macro universe, um, each of the planets, they connect to different frequencies that will have different effects on our physical body, also different effects on our energy bodies, because as we've talked about before too, we connect with different archetypes going back to the story, right? So anytime that we can tune our physiology towards something um, outside of us, it brings different information back into our bodies. And when we bring in new information, we expand, right? So for instance, um, if I wanted to bring in a healing energy, I actually would probably bring in vibrations from Mars, mm. knowing that that I'm destroying that which no longer serves and healing that which does. If I wanted to bring in beauty or love or creativity, I'm gonna con connect with the ethos of Venus, right? And that's actually the frequencies that, that we hear. Um, if I wanna connect to power, to um, uh, shining, if I, to, to leadership towards an engagement of a singular focus and purpose and spirit, of being able to spread light, I'm gonna head to the sun. If I'm going to go into a place of constant expansion and evolution, I may start going into deep space and just keep going. I've got to be careful to come back though, though, to right, you know, <laughs> you don't want to go too far. But and really, there's not a problem if you listen to this album. You're not going to go too far. It's all good. I thought about that, and that's how we designed it. So, um, it, you know, it, it, but it's all about these patterns that we connect to. So this album came about as a result of I was uh, been helping a family member deal with a, a pretty intense healing situation. And I thought, well, what else can I do? And so I started experimenting and, and playing with the sounds of different frequencies. And when I found that it would begin to create vibrations in the body that actually brought about healing responses, not just, oh, I feel better, but like, oh, okay, I'm actually changing my red blood count, red blood cell count. Wow, I'm actually affecting my um, my heart rate, so I'm strengthening my heart in a way that I wasn't able to before. Um, I knew that we were onto something. So in this particular album, we fused original ambient compositions that are tuned to the specific frequencies of the planets with gongs that are tuned to the specific frequencies of each planet. And then we also add um, Sanskrit mantra. So Sanskrit is also an ancient energy language. Sanskrit, when we recognize there's actually truly not meaning to mantra, we give it meaning so our mind can kind of understand the direction that we're headed in. But really there isn't meaning in, mon in Sanskrit mantra. So when we bring in these extra sounds, we're kind of boosting out this healing potential in space because you don't have to do much. The mantra will do it for you. There's a, a beautiful saying in um, ancient Vedic understanding that they say that whether you're a saint or a sinner, uh, a mantra will heal your body in the exact same way, as long as you do it correctly. So that's something we've spent a lot of time making sure that, that we're done as correctly as possible. And of course, there's always opportunity for expansion and, and deeper perfection. 
Um, and then the last element on the album is we actually infuse all of these compositions and these um, elements that we brought together with sounds recorded by NASA in space Ooh. of these different celestial bodies. And it was really cool for me because I actually got to channel all of this music. And uh, fun side note that I don't really share very often, but um, all of my life I've been able to, I've, I always hear music. And I don't mean what's on the radio. <laughs> I mean actual, I mean music and frequency and tones that I can't really explain. And I usually can't duplicate. I've always been so intrigued by it. Actually, I studied world music because I'm like, there's got to be instruments around the world that make these, these noises that I hear in my noises, these sounds that I hear in my head, but there really isn't. And wow. um, um, a, a very dear friend of mine who is a brilliant um, intuitive person, she said, you know, you're just listening to the music of the spheres. And I was like, the what? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, she told me this when I was probably about 18 or 19. And I, um, I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense. And I know I'm not the only person that, that hears the music of the spheres, but I will say it's a very unique um, experience to be able to have. It's the, it's the harmony, the melody, the dissonance, all rolled into one of the cosmic greatness that surround us, that we sit in the middle of this cosmic soup. And tuning into the individual ingredients is really profoundly fascinating because when you tune into an individual ingredient you see how it affects the whole you know we know what a carrot tastes like on its own but when you put it into vegetable soup the complexity of the carrot changes and it also changes the overall taste and experience of the soup itself and really the planets all of life is no different than that it's a function of how do we going back to this idea of relationship and patterns. How do we relate to these individual patterns? And by doing so, how do we become a greater version of ourselves? Good answer. <laughs> 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 so that, that, that was beautiful. And, and the last thing I'll say to, to summarize what I got from that is that like every song you're connecting with like a potential archetype or like every song has almost an intention. Again, you want to feel leadership, connect to the, the literally the song titled Sun. If you want to connect to he, the energies and intentionality of healing, Mars and vice versa. Now let's say someone wants to channel, uh, receive this energy of leadership and Sun. How long do you recommend listening to that song on repeat? So most people's systems will only be able to handle a certain vibration for so long. I don't know if, if you as a kid were ever growing up and like your favorite song, you'd just gotten a really cool, uh, whether it was a, you know, a CD or a vinyl, or you're just streaming it on Spotify, whatever it was, um, you know, and you just kept playing it over and over. There was a point yeah. of diminishing returns, right? When totally. you're like, okay, I, I've, I've had enough of it. Sometimes it takes a lot longer to get to that point, but sometimes you can get to it pretty quickly. And sometimes once you have something, uh, a, a song like that, a frequency of vibration so ingrained in your physical body, something that might take you this long time-wise to get to, you can get to it in this amount of time because you've built up this resonance, this understanding of it. So the answer to your question is, is it, it depends on the individual and, and each person would know. It's interesting. One of the things that we've studied on the tracks, about the tracks is, is that um, most signs very directly connect with planets that rule their individual sign. And it doesn't matter if we're looking at our, um, we, we've looked at our, um, your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign, rising. both in tropical or Western astrology, as well as in Eastern or Vedic. in Vedic and, and Vedic. Jyotisha astrology as well. So there's, but it makes sense. We're just all patterns. There's a pattern that's already built in within us that we reconnect to. So if you're looking to heighten um, a, a pattern that's already innate to you, for instance, if you're a Leo and you really want to bring out some of these more powerful leadership shining qualities, you may only have to listen to the track Sun once or twice because it's already there. 
you may have to listen to it a lot longer because there's something that, that's, that's pulled you off of that. That's fine too. You're not going to know. But for instance, like if you're a cancer who is um, very much uh, in this very kind of home Actually, Moon is what we connect with cancer, cancer of, of ruling cancer. On the album, we connect cancer with Sedna, who is this triple goddess energy. So this very nurturing, but powerful and strong, but all about the home and inner inner world. You know, you may have to listen and, and you want to bring forth a leadership quality. You may have to listen to Sun a little bit longer because it's a little bit outside of where you are. Uh... But again depends on what you're rising and your moon are and it, there's a lot of things that go into it so it's really not a one size fits all it's a what feels good and if everything is vibration which it is it's all about the feeling because that's our initial response to vibration you know sound sight those are very limited responses, but we're responding to vibration. Light is vibration. Sound is vibration. We see basically one octave of color. We basically hear 10 octaves of sound, but feeling, we feel beyond that. So always go with the gut. Wow. Man, I our time is up, but I want to like go for another hour and just like jump into stuff. But Thank you so much for sharing all this. Now, lastly, if you could share with myself and the audience uh, what you're currently working on and where we can find you to support you. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Well, you can always find us online. Um, my website will direct you wherever you want or need to go. It's just Charlene.com. Charlene is spelled with an extra E. There's three E's. My mother got very excited with the with the, the vowels. Would you like to buy a vowel? I think she was watching. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune or something, but she, she um, it's, so it's Charlene, C-H-A-R-L-E-E-N-E.com. And that'll take you wherever you want to find us and connect with us on social media and online. We, uh, I spend most of my time on social media if, if and when I'm on is on Instagram. So do come over and say hello. We do a lot of live streaming as well. So if you, if that's something that, um, especially on your, your YouTube people to pop over and, and, and subscribe, that would be fantastic. We do live streams. We have another one coming up here soon and depending on when this airs. So, but there's always be sure to get alerts of those coming up because those are a lot of fun and it is all about sound healing wholeness <laughs> whatever you want to call it but it's that it's that it's that reconnecting to that inner sovereignty with you and the cool thing about those um those sessions is we actually usually are connecting with the energies of the day so what's going on in the skies around us so whether it's a full moon and connecting with what houses it's moving through and how it's affecting our signs whether it's just that the moon is moving in cancer and that means we're feeling very subdued today or whatever and then we we connect us to very specific themes and and work the energies around that so they hopefully have a little more lasting and visceral effect within our phys physical bodies so that's always a lot of fun i'd love to see you there and be sure to tell me uh, where you you know where you initially where we got to connect from because I always like to hear that too and what I can do to serve or how I can be of help as well because this is life man we're all in this together Aho well th thank you for a, a fascinating my gosh a wow fascinating conversation <laughs> like I, I, I'll be I'll be playing this podcast probably a few times and taking everything and this is truly one of my favorites this is probably top three I've, oh, I've, I've ever done for myself it's been such a blessing to be here with you yeah and I'm yeah. so excited too for all that you're doing not only for your community but in your life which will in turn impact all the people that that, that connect with you so it's, it's you know what just enjoy life, have fun, and be as fully engaged as you can at every moment. I think that's some of the greatest advice that's ever been given to me. So it's something I always love to reflect back just and remind mostly myself anytime I, I have an opportunity to, but it's, it's true. You know, life is as, mm. only as it's full as we allow it to be. Mm. Thank you, Charlene, and have yourself a wonderful day, okay? You as well. Welcome back, everyone. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to check out more episodes just like this one, click right here and I'll see you in the next one.